Hey Steve. Checking your crypto? Yeah, that's what I was <laughs> doing was just to see what the uh, price of uh, Bitcoin is. 33681. Well, Love that's that. That's the topic for today. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about Bitcoin, Bitcoin, this is the show you want to watch. It's going to like it. You're going to like this one. Hey, Steve. Welcome to the Steve and Steve Show. I'm Steve Wastenberg. And I'm Steve Walsh. And thank you for showing up here. We really appreciate it. We would ask you, if you don't mind, uh, taking a moment to subscribe, taking a moment to like yep. this video if you like it. If you don't, well, don't unlike it. <laughs> One of the unlike and, it and share And share, share the content with it. And if you really have some time on your hands, go back and look through our, our uh, library of videos. There's over 50 recordings. 52 now, we've done a full on year. That's right, it's pretty so exciting. It is very exciting. Yeah. Well, speaking of exciting, what do we got to talk about today? What do we get to talk about today? I thought today we would, we would talk a little bit more on a topic that you like to talk about. Uh-oh, eating? Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Wow, I thought we were going to talk about something else. <laughs> so, Bitcoin. Bitcoin, yeah. It's kind of in the in the news nowadays, right? It is. And, and so why I wanted to talk about that is because it's in the news. Okay. Right? So, uh, in in the fall, like September, October of, of, of 2020. 2020, okay. Right? Bitcoin was right around 10,000, 11,000. It fluctuated. Sometimes it dropped down to... To eight nine thousand in that in that time period. Mm -hmm. Today in January of 2021, Bitcoin is in the high 30s. It's bounced into the 40s. Yeah, it's actually gone. I think as high as 42, 41, six or seven. Yeah. Yeah, and it's right now around 33 or so, 34 somewhere in there. Yeah. So. Couple questions. Okay, I actually what just had somebody call me today on Bitcoin. All right, well, out of that, the blue. Well, let me ask my question. Uh, yeah, please do. What are we drinking? Oh, we're <laughs> we're drinking water. We're gonna make this one a more sober conversation. Yeah, so if you can see, it's you know, you can see the window behind me that it's dark, it's dark out. Yeah, we're it's gonna dark, and so I'm gonna have to drive back home and we can't. Be yeah, water's good for you though. We're supposed to drink a lot of water. That's right. So, water it is. Yep. All right, ask away. All right, so what the heck is going on with Bitcoin? Why did it jump from October where it was only in, you know, maybe 10,000 if we just want to round it to a, to a number, right? Now we're at 40, so it's like a 400% gain. Right. Right? So what, what do you, what's the word on the street, man? What's, why is it going? Well, that is, going a, up? that is an excellent question, Steve, and I actually have the answer. Illuminati. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, the Illuminati has decided that they're dropping all of the fiat currencies out there and they are buying Bitcoin. You heard it here first on the Steve and Steve show. That's what it is. So if you want to get in there and take some of that power away from the Illuminati, why buy Bitcoin? Okay, that's probably not what is. I suppose it could be, but... That's certainly something I didn't think would come up on this show. <laughs> no, I... And while we're at it, we might as well start about, talk about the Builder God group. <laughs> yeah, the, build, the, the, the Bilderberg, Bilderberg, Bilderberg group. group. Yeah, right. go down to the <laughs> island on Dr. Jekyll's Island and stuff. No, um, I, I, it's really, uh, I think, a couple of different things that are going on. And I'm no you know, financial genius on this, but I have followed it for quite a while. Um, of course, supply and demand. Um, yeah, and, and the thing about the supply and the demand on Bitcoin is, is, is unlike a lot of the more, um, what would be considered reserve currencies, not like the fiat currencies. And when we talk about fiat currencies, we mean that those currencies like the US dollar, like the pound, they can actually be printed to put more mm -hmm. of that currency into circulation. Well, in the case of Bitcoin, you can't do that because it's only ever going to be 21 million 
bitcoins, those are broken out into what we call Satoshis. So there's a hundred million Satoshis for each Bitcoin. A hundred million? A hundred million, yeah. It's a lot of incremental. That's a, that's a lot of zeros. That's a lot of zeros. Um, but but the, the point is there's still only a limited supply of Bitcoin that'll ever be here. And there's a whole mining process that you, we're not gonna go in here. We did a video on some of that before, um, that you go through to actually get those coins into circulation. So. Today, there's about 18 million, 500, 18 and a half million or so Bitcoins in circulation. And so just by that, if there's only a certain amount of supply and people demand it or buy it, that's going to raise the price. Yeah. So what's, so what's, so what's the demand, right? Because it went, I mean, 400%. Yeah. So that's a pretty big jump for for anything. So so if you know if you followed Bitcoin in in its 12 or so years of history, you've seen these kind of jumps and drops and jumps and drops. And it's it has been a jump a drop, a jump a drop and it's the, the trend line has been ridiculously on an upslope oh, the whole time. But there have been really big drops. People call it speculative because of that. Um, so what happens is people get it up here and then they'll sell out to get their cash. They'll convert it to dollars, sell the Bitcoin out. You get a bunch more people selling, even institutions selling it, and the price drops down because yeah. the sell is what's putting the pressure on the way down. Um, but then it gets down to here and old greed comes back in and says, wow, did it once, it's probably gonna do it again. And it has done that about four times over this past, five times, I think, over the, maybe even six, over the past uh, yeah. 12 years or so. Well, just, just this last weekend, right? It was it was up in the 40s and then it dropped down to 30. Yeah. So it dropped 32, good, 31. 10, 10 $12,000 yeah. in, in a weekend. Right, right. right. Now it's, it's starting to inch its way back up. And certainly this, this video is going to be well, it's published. Gonna pop in. In. Well, this video is going to be published in a couple of weeks. So what we'll, anything we're talking about right now will be history. You're right. And when it, and, and, <laughs> but the thing is, this video will also bump it. You you got to know that. Oh, the, with all this, the millions of fans. Yeah, we, we got there. a lot of people out there. This is probably going <laughs> to. So you're you're good to get anyway. Um, but the other thing, Steve, well, is and it, you know, I was just thinking that that you know the internet is kind of forever in some some sense. We will be hyping. Then that. then like in. In a couple of years, they're going to be going. Wow, these guys were talking about Bitcoin only being thirty, and it's up at a million a coin. <laughs> You're right. Good. That's like kind of a little time machine thing we're doing again. Um, well, so anyway, so, that, so, they go. I can't believe those guys were trading Bitcoin at thirty. Look at we can get it so many for the. <laughs> or they could be doing that. Remember that Bitcoin thing those guys talked about? <laughs> oh, what a joke! That's completely gone. No, kind of like um, Pokemon cards or something. All right, we got to get off of this and go. <laughs> so supply and demand, that's yep. certainly something. But you don't have supply and demand if you don't have any demand, right? So one of the big runs that people always go to is in 2017 and early 2018, where Bitcoin really did, and the altcoins, the alternative coins around it, really did what we call a parabolic rise. Um, and that came from a lot of people starting to get into what this whole Bitcoin craze was. And so that created a lot of uh, real demand. And it also got into a whole bunch of the alternative coins that were out there. And everybody said, wow, this is really going to be something huge. And so they jumped on the bandwagon, if you will. But I will say back then, we really didn't have... Uh, a, a lot of institutional kind of investing happening. It was mostly what we call more on the retail side of things. And when I say retail, I mean, you know, every person that's out there that just decides to go and buy some and, and that's kind of a retail, a smaller investor out there. Yeah. Institutional investors, on the other hand, are big money stuff. And if you've been watching well, any of well, them- when they buy something that's multi- It is, and it's also, they carry a lot of clout from the standpoint of, of PR and you know the narrative getting out there that this is a real thing because you know, Jim Cramer talks about it, or, or Squawk Box talks about it, or Bloomberg talks about it, or, you know, some of these financial groups. And if you kind of listen in the last 
couple months, a lot more of that is Bitcoin is being talked about and a lot more of the lamestream. Yeah. Mainstream. mainstream media <laughs> out there in the in the world so so that actually creates kind of a demand right <laughs> right yeah like that creates slip. that creates de demand as well so if you missed um, it hit rewind <laughs> <laughs> um, so and uh, so if you've got if you so if you've got supply uh, you know if you if you got less supply than you have on demand, and then you start getting a lot more talked about, which is gonna increase the demand, you're gonna get a lot of people in there. But whenever you get that, you're gonna get people that, you know, let's face it, there a lot of those people are in there for the speculative kind of, I'm gonna make some quick money on this thing. And when they go and sell, well, then it kind of drops off. Yeah. So, it's, so, so, so what I'm hearing is in the last few months, We've had a lot of institu institutional investments into Bitcoin. A lot more than the last parabolic run by far. Okay. So well, that, that, I'm only saying that from what the talk is, the right. buzz around it is a lot more. Right. So and there's a lot more institutions that are create are actually creating some of that buzz. And, and there's and there's gurus out there, financial gurus that yes. are out there saying if you're not in it, you're late. Right, and there's and there's financial gurus who at four years ago would have totally laughed at this, who have turned around now and become converts, yeah, ad, yeah, advocates, too. and they're like, oh dear, this is real, yeah. and I'm putting my you know money where my mouth is and getting some Bitcoin. Right, um, that's happening quite a bit as well. Yeah. So, so, and. It's, it's a topic that a lot of people are understanding a little bit more. Absolutely. Right? They're, they're having those discussions right. around the family kitchen table, right, out at the bars. People are having so, – similar right. to why you had that phone call today. I, totally. I mean, uh, this is a good friend of mine from the, you know, the real estate industry. He's an incredibly successful real estate guy. And um, we talk, you know, a couple times a year, but usually I'm the one giving him a call just to see, because he's busy as heck. And he called me up and was saying, hey, you know, what? what's this? Uh, I know you've always talked about Bitcoin. What do you think? Where is it? And so we had a great conversation about that. And yeah. um, uh, I'll see where, I don't know if he'll actually invest in it or not, but um, uh, that's, and, and the other thing that's happening is a lot of, chatter on a lot of the social media on various various platforms like that are at a very young age that the the younger investors and because of things like Robinhood out there where Robinhood really catered as an exchange as a stock exchange really catered to the younger generation mm -hmm. they also allow you to buy bitcoin on their platform so mm -hmm. that's a it's an on ramp so, to so it's become and it's becoming more Accessible. It's very much more accessible. PayPal just recently announced that they're going to allow right. um, Bitcoin. Visa, I think, I might get that one wrong, but I'm pretty sure that one of the big uh, credit card companies is is going to make an on-ramp onto Bitcoin okay. as well. Interesting. Uh, don't completely quote me on that. Well, Google but it, that but thing it it's coming down to where... Duck, duck, go it or something. It, before, you really had to understand cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, how do yeah. you get it, right? Now with... Even PayPal and some of the other um, more traditional, I guess, traditional mm -hmm. uh, exchanges are allowing it to be traded, right? So it's they're becoming an easy way for people to figure out. Oh, I can buy it through this. A lot easier way. Well, I'll just ask you. I mean, well, it, two years ago, what would you have said around this? I, I would have not known. Right, and that's where you came in because you helped me get on the like, Coinbase, where it does, you know, that's I wouldn't, I would, that's to me, that's not like a, a standard place, right? PayPal is a standard. Yeah, place. no, everybody, you're right. Everybody knows how to use PayPal, right? Yep. And, and PayPal owns Venmo, and Venmo is like one of the most prolific, you know, younger generation weight means of paying things. Right. And I have heard. You know, we never know until it actually happens, but that PayPal is going to facilitate uh, Bitcoin purchases and trading via Venmo. Hmm, interesting. Which would be really interesting. Yeah, yeah. So that, so that's what I was looking at. Was like when I, when you were talking to me first about getting into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, 
I had no idea where to even begin. Right now, it's easier. Everyone's talking about it. There's more applications out there that allow you to do right. it. Right. So I think that's helping. Um, certainly, the buzz of watching it go from ten thousand to forty thousand is adding to the fire. Right. That's the additional fuel. Yeah. No, you're right. They they you just get one word about how what this is doing and how do I get onto that? How right. do I get on that train? Right. So we have a thing called FOMO which is fear of missing out. Yeah. And that's something in the stock market always. But anything that's new, the FOMO starts to build around it and it's like, I gotta get in this, I gotta. And that kind of builds and builds into a momentum. The wave gets a lot bigger and you know raises the price of Bitcoin. FOMO is a real thing. FOMO is a real thing. <laughs> fear of missing that's out. A, that's in anything, right? It is in anything. It's like you, you, you call a friend and, and they say, you ask them, hey, where are you going? Oh, I'm going out. Well, where are you going? You're leaving me out. Exactly. <laughs> no, it's, it's true. It's like almost ingrained in us. To, to a party. Then you're going to leave me on the sign? You know? Yeah. Yeah. So. so that's, it's, it's interesting that this, this whole Bitcoin is to watch it in a short period of time to take off. Um, one of the questions I had for you over the weekend is, you know, it was, it was 40 and then it dropped down to 30. But one of the things is like, okay, you know, Robert Kiyosaki was like, you got to get in before it goes over 20. Got to get in before it goes over 20. And then it went over 20. It went to 30 and 40 quickly, right? So the question I was asking is, well, if I were to get in at 40, is that is that something smart to do? Boy, is that ever the question of the whatever thing you're buying today kind of thing. Yeah. And I am not a financial planner, nor is this financial advice. Um, I, nobody has a crystal ball. Uh, what we can go off of is, look, there's a, there's a def, we do definitely know that there's a limited supply of Bitcoin and that there's an awful lot of FOMO in and around Bitcoin. With those two things going, you would think that, hey, this is something that's likely to continue to go. And especially with the, uh, arguably, you could say that the U.S. dollar is in a little bit of jeopardy, jeopardy. Yeah in terms of its value potentially um, around the world. And so it, are people looking for something like gold or silver of a stronger store of value? And does Bitcoin fit into that? For me personally, without a doubt it does. Um, and I put my money where my mouth is. I, I definitely, I look at these pullbacks as opportunities to just get a little bit more, yeah. to buy a little bit more, you know? And remember this, when someone buys Bitcoin, everybody thinks, oh dear, it's $40,000, how can I buy that? You can put $100 mm -hmm. and buy $100 worth of Bitcoin, you're gonna have a small amount, but there are people goes, out there. But it goes up in that same, so if you had $100 back in October, and it, right, went, and it went up 100%, you'd have $400. 200. Oh, well, if it went up four hundred percent, yeah, which it did, you'd have four hundred dollars, yeah. And I mean, I, I have, I know people that have done things like that, yeah, small amounts. Now they don't like to see the corollary of it when it went to forty-two and then dropped back down to twenty-nine or thirty, and they're going, oh dear, now what, you know? And um, right. so I, I personally think, look, there are people out there, and these are legit people that have been, uh, you know, doing this for a long, for all of the twelve years that say, well, even this, if you have 0.28 of a Bitcoin, so basically almost a third of a Bitcoin, you are in like the top 5% of people that hold on to Bitcoin. Really? It might even be uh, closer to the top 1%. So you're going to have to check that, but you are... Well, if you think about it, how many, how many billions of people are on there? That's exactly right. 7 billion people, divide that by, you know, 18 and a half million... Yeah. And you have a third of a Bitcoin. Well, the math isn't that difficult, even though I was an English major. <laughs> and you were in the Army. <laughs> and I was, hey, hey, hey. Oh, you thanks, were making, thanks for your service. You were making some kind of an Air Force uh, analogy. That was something there, like that. Yeah. There was a well, side note. I was watching. Uh, there's a, a knife building competition called The Forge, I think. I don't know where it is. My kids watch it, but. They got me looped in. They were doing the services, and there was one guy. I think he was with. He he had to been with the. Um, I think he was with the army, because he said that that 
you could tell that the, the Navy, the Marines, and the Air Force weren't around because they didn't see any golf clubs or crayons. <laughs> well, which of the Marines wouldn't like that? But anyway. <laughs> Maybe he was a Marine. I don't know. <laughs> I might have messed it up. All right, so back to back to the yep. Bitcoin. Um, so it's it's like any investment, right? There's there's always a risk. Always a risk. So always manage your risk. And, and there right? and there's still things that could happen to bit things in the in the world that can affect Bitcoin. Yeah. Just like things in the world can affect the value of gold, the value of silver, the value of our dollar. Right. No, there are. And I mean and and I think the thing, you know, while we would maybe argue we being people that really um have have looked into the the protocol of the blockchain that's Bitcoin, it is decentralized. So it's not like somebody can just take, it's very difficult. It would be incredibly, incredibly difficult to take down the blockchain. Uh, it, you'd have to have a 51% attack as one of the ways. And that is mathematically next to impossible. Um, because of how long it's been out there and how long, how many nodes are out there and how, how decentralized it really is. Um, but that doesn't mean that the image of Bitcoin couldn't get really sullied because let's say it just drops down to a rocket and people finally say, you know what, I'm done with it. And they right. just leave it aside. Well, and okay. then supply and demand, some, it's just not there. Some... Some regulatory thing could happen. Yeah, that could limit its usage. What it could do is they could the, regulatory wise they could say, "Hey, you can't own Bitcoin." You know, the U.S. Well, government could say it. Now, China's already done that. India's done that. Multiple places have done that over the years, and it didn't have. It had an effect, right. and that it didn't have. Mount Gox, for example, is something well, that happened well, where the what, exchange what, went completely. Yeah, well, I think what. To, what I think could potentially happen is maybe not the individual because it's digital, right? You can put it in a um, an offline wallet. Yeah, you can. You right? can put it on a completely cold storage, is what they call. Right, and so it's it's kind of that serial number, whatever that is, right, is is assigned to you, and you're the only one that has the keys to get to that. Um, but like the institutes. The, the, oh, the, the institution trade. itself, like yeah. exchange. Yeah. Like, well, they, they, so like, yeah, it's so like the, the U.S. government or whichever government could come out and say um, commercialized in, entities can no longer own or, or transact yes. with that. And that yes. would affect. Absolutely, value, right? it would. In fact, I would say that the major, a big percentage of the people that are getting into Bitcoin right now are getting into it on what we call a custodial type exchange, meaning that that, so let's say something like Coinbase or Kraken or, um, by, yeah, any of these, <laughs> you don't actually own your Bitcoin in the sense of you have the key to your Bitcoin. You, you are giving custodial rights to that exchange to hold it on your behalf. And if you decide to sell it, well, you'll get whatever you convert it to or you get it, you know, in dollars. But you don't have, so there's a saying in the Bitcoin world, uh, not your keys, not your Bitcoin. So the end game probably is that if you're really getting into this, you should do, well, obviously you should do some studying on it and, and look into it, but you should figure out how maybe you can get that eventually. If you do get some, get it off into some kind of a cold or hot wallet that is really your keys so that you own it. It's kind of like then taking that gold bar out of Fort Knox and putting it in your backyard. Where nobody knows but you. Yeah, and that place, <laughs> that one corner in your backyard where you dug that down and there's an X marked on it. Right. Yeah, that's the that's the place. Where, no, but I mean, the, gold, I think, is a good example of it, right? A lot of people will buy gold, but they'll have it stored at a facility. And so is it really your gold? It is, but they've got custody of it. Yeah. And if something happened, well, that could be it. And to your point, if something happened to one of these exchanges where your Bitcoin is, because the government says, no more, we're shutting you down, you could have some trouble getting that out of there. Yeah, the, the value of it, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, Steve, I don't know how we're, how I we think are we're on time, but I think it's 
pretty close to, to a full segment. I think so, yeah. We had a lot of different topics here. It is. Um, if there was one tip that you wanted to give everybody on Bitcoin, what would that be? You know, I would say you need to go out and do some research on it. And there's a couple of places that I would go for sure. An easy book, and when I say easy, I mean a simple, a real straightforward read, is called The Little Bitcoin Book. You can go and get that, you know, uh, go and find it in lots of places. Um, the one that's uh, uh, maybe a, a more extensive read, but absolutely my favorite book out there is by an author, Saif Adin Amus. Uh, sorry if I said your name wrong, Saif Adin. I think that's how you pronounce it. And it's called the Bitcoin Standard. That's kind of like the gold standard, you know, but it's yeah. the Bitcoin Standard. And he just finished another, well, he's finishing another book. Well, they, but the Bitcoin the, Standard is... Uh, yeah, you had me read that one when I started. And I'll just caution folks. It is a good book. Um, but it, it's, it talks more along the lines of, of money. The history, history of history money, of yeah. Money and how we got to Bitcoin. Yeah. It, it doesn't... So I think it's good. It's a good that, education from though. that standpoint. Yeah. Um, there's there's some videos by Mike Mahoney, who's one of the rich yeah. advisors, and it's yeah. the the, uh, the secret of money. I think it yeah, is. yeah, the secret of money. I think so. Um, and, then, and he does a really good explanation around money and currencies. Yep, so he does. People, and he has some Bitcoin. He does cryptocurrency videos out there too. So he'd be good a good resource. Andreas well. Antonopoulos also has a bunch of videos out there. He's a Greek guy. Um, that uh, he's fantastic as well. A lot of education stuff. And then if you just want to go out onto some of the YouTube or Theta channels, uh, there's a guy that has been in this for uh, a decent amount of time, young guy, uh, uh, Chico Crypto is his, is his channel, Chico Crypto. And I really, I really like what he he's, does. He's a character. He's, he is a character, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, but that, I call him the Sherlock Holmes of cryptocurrency this guy finds I, more I, stuff with his videos if you watch one of his videos you don't like it then go to another video and watch it because he, absolutely he has different kind of personas that he, he does plays. he does and there, there's a couple of them that are not as exciting that's true others. that's true and he can get really deep in because he's a smart guy <laughs> um but there's some of them that are just absolutely really just he's just he's a sleuth the guy is a fantastic uh guy anyway all right so did we leave anybody out that was i left think that's uh, there's a ton of <laughs> ton more people but yeah let's all right steve cheers thanks for watching our show and getting this far in the video don't forget that subscribe button and, and like, that bell like, for like. the notification for the next show which which i'm sure is going to be interesting yes it will be is. yep <laughs> we'll figure it out so, cheers thank you cheers.